and thank you for taking out time for this session uh, while it seems that most of our community already uh, knows you i'd still like to give a quick introductions for the ones who don't know you uh, so you uh, you know for everyone else benefit uh, sarika is the co-founder of green giraffes consulting she has over 17 years of experience in retail online e-commerce so basically by the you know just about the time e-commerce was starting in india sarika has been involved right from the beginning she has worked with various large retail formats run her own design studio scaled up e-commerce businesses and consulted with several startups some of the companies she has worked with are future group benetton philips 99labels.com currently she and her team consults for brands to scale businesses online across various digital platforms including amazon web stores app social landscape uh, while today's discussion is a little more focused on amazon she also has expertise on some of the other online channels which are available some of our clients include genesis luxury which is the biggest distributor for international luxury brands wedme good good which is a wedding planner company dog spot i think the founders of dog spot are there on the group satyapal roposo nine stack shumi peabody i think peabody is also there on the group uh, maybe a few others are as there as well i'm not aware maybe uh, she is also an mba from isb hyderabad and prior to complete uh, prior to that she has completed a post graduate uh, post graduate diploma in apparel marketing from national institute of fashion technology so sarika that's a lot of experience you have clearly and all of us are really looking forward to gain from your experience and learn uh, so i believe you have a small deck which you uh, can perhaps present to us and then uh, the community has been really looking forward to this discussion so there are like close to 100 odd questions uh, which are there we may not have the time to take all of those but we we have tried to create some short list and then we will also invite questions during uh, the interaction which people can post on chat we may not be able to take uh, uh, one on one interactions uh, in the interest of time so over to you okay thank you so much anrag um one thank you for inviting me here um abhishek reached out and thank you very much um and uh, thank you for every everybody for coming in for the session um i am hope we keeping the environment and today's time in mind everybody is safe and their loved ones are safe and i wish everybody to stay safe um so from here on um, as uh, anurag said i'm going to run a, um, about 20 minutes of conversation and then we'll open up for q and a which anurag will collate from the questions that we've already received and then the ones that we'll receive in the course of this conversation i do have a small request this is the first time i'm doing a zoom um a call of this nature so if you can't hear me at any point or there's a break please highlight that out so that i can retract fix and come back so i would i would um, request uh, for that um and i'm going to now share my screen and um, i would i would start the conversation yeah okay so i think today we are largely focused around uh, scaling up on amazon so i want to talk a little bit of how i've structured the conversation for the first 20 minutes um i was thinking about all of you and my audience and um in my mind this presentation is for like three categories like three categories of businesses and where you are at various stages in the business uh categories businesses that perhaps not to sell yet or are you guys are in just your base preliminary stage category b are for businesses that are already selling and you have fair amount of success on the platform category c is for businesses that are par users of amazon like you guys are looking for just very very specific improvement hacks um that deck put together is actually for category and category b users um if you belong to category c i would love to pick up and take specific questions and address them for you whether in a q and a round or later um and i think category c has enough experience with them for amazon and other platforms so it would be great if there is a certain question if i have answered you think there is more input that you have you want to chip in please chip in so it will be great it will make it interactive and it will be a stronger um um a uh, conversation amongst all of us so that's that's how i've gone through the pr uh, presentation um my next slide talks a little bit about just amazon and i think it's it's just there for the sake of it honestly because all of us have enough data and more 
on number of sellers on Amazon, 500,000K, customers on Amazon India, 100 million, going to go to 200 million. Now with COVID and time, even if you're talking projections of 2024, 2026, it's going to be much faster. And current Amazon share in India e-commerce is about 31%, which again, in my mind, is going to explode. There are all kinds of numbers which are floating around, so I don't know what is an actual correct number post-COVID. Um, that, that would be a more accurate assumption. Um, I do remember a question somebody posted um, early on saying, how is it different? Or why Amazon and not other platforms for, uh, for sellers and customers? Um, I think, um, so for sellers, I would say, or for brands, I would say, Amazon ecosystem is one of the most transparent. It's an animal by itself. So there is, it's chaotic and it's an animal uh, by itself. And sometimes the ear doesn't talk to the tail, like if I have to say an elephant, right? Um, uh, but what happens is amongst all other marketplaces, it still has a fair amount of processes in place and it's a fairly transparent system. I have access to my dashboards where I can go and see reports, whether they're business reports, whether they're analytical reports, whether it's my campaigns. The Amazon bid system is more transparent than, than a lot of other bid systems like, like Google, like the same ad system, uh, which is far more advanced than any other marketplace right now. So uh, you need to be on all platforms which are relevant, but um, I would put special focus and emphasis on Amazon amongst all marketplaces. Um, so that's that's from a seller point of view and i would actually like to share from my own personal experiences why amazon for a lot of customers i think the customer experience is great um i once had on my amazon account and my wallet had some money and somebody hacked into my account and i had two transactions which which were um which were high transactions to nike and um I, and it was a gift card, so there was not even an address left there, and I did not know what to do with it. Amazon sorted that out for me within two hours. I got my money back. I, they put in a file in a complaint. They addressed it. They followed up. They made sure that everything was in place and I was fine. They made me change my password. Now, that level of trust and customer experience is not available across all platforms. I am uncomfortable putting my credit card across all platforms, but I'm very comfortable putting my credit card in Amazon and keeping it there. I get delivery next day. And those are some of the things which are obvious, but this was a personal experience of mine, which I wanted to share. And I think that goes for a lot of people that the fact that they're, they deliver fast and available and customer experience is good, besides the fact large assortment, et cetera, all of that uh, makes Amazon um, a good or a, or a it's a it's a go to shop yeah now uh coming to the core of the uh, our conversation today um you know when we talk about scaling up um there are lots of uh, conversations around what are the hacks how can we grow how do we go from here what are the quick fixes we can do and before i begin i want to say there's no real quick fix you have to work on certain aspects of the business to begin with and then continue to work on it and continue to find to it and continue to grow on it. There is no other way on this. So when I look, when we were talking about scaling up, we said, what are the five most important things for scaling up? And for us, um, when we put this together and when we also work with our clients is one is yes, it's very obvious product and inventory. What is your product assortment and how you manage your inventory? Um, the second is discoverability, which all of us are concerned about. How do I do my ad spend? How do I come on the first page? Is my listing fine? Um, third is reviews and rating. How do I increase my reviews? And what does reviews do? And how do I really like go from 10 reviews to 100 reviews like tomorrow? Uh, and the fourth is your relationship with Amazon team is very critical. Um, and then cross-border sales, newer markets, you want to go to US, UK, Europe, you're looking at UAE, which is the latest one, which has opened up, there's Australia, there's Japan, what markets, how do we go to each of these markets, how do we treat them differently? Um, now, if I deep dive into each of these, and my team is also on this call, and they can jump in whenever they want, Bhikti and Asta, um, um, if we deep dive into each of these in detail, what will happen is I need literally two hours at a bare minimum on each of these. And that will be just to, and I would still not have died in. So 
for the sake of today's discussion, what have, we've done is in each of these, we've looked at some three, four key points and insights that we think are very, very critical across each of these, which we, you have to do and you have to keep in mind and that you can't slip off on those. So those are important and we are highlighting those. Um, some of them may be just a repeat for a lot of you. Some may be maybe a new insight. Um, and then we can open up to Q&A and maybe go into more specific questions that we can answer. So having said that, I'm going to begin with product and inventory. Um, now, when we're talking product, pricing is a part of product for us. So we say product, pricing, inventory. Um, I know it is saying like product assortment and it's very important to have all your SKUs listed. The higher the number of SKUs you've listed on the platform, the higher organic visibility you have. So what I'm trying to say is if you have 1,000 SKUs, if you have 400 SKUs, you have 100 SKUs. Parika, if list. I may interrupt you for a second. Yes. Uh, I think your voice is breaking in between for uh, some of the members. So what I'm requesting is if you can uh, switch off your video, so it will probably be less heavy on the bandwidth. And just let the slideshow run. And once we go to the Q&A, we can switch off the slideshow and just run the video. Uh, yeah. 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 Let me just. Uh, yeah. Is this better? Can is this better for to hear? Yeah, uh, it, earlier also it was not breaking all the time. I think let's go and if there is an issue, I'll probably yeah, yeah. Please, thank you. That that's great. Thank you, Anurag. So um, when we are talking product, and when I'm saying you need to have a high, have all your SKUs and your entire catalog on on Amazon, it doesn't mean that you only um, that you need to spread your focus. Like for example, if you have 400 SKUs on Amazon you will still focus on your top 40 SKUs or top 30 SKUs in terms of your ads, in terms of your making sure your content is perfect, um, you're using them for all your deals and promotions, but you still need to list all of them because when I search, let's say I search for toys for two year old, I will see if I see my brand coming in multiple rows and lines and a page which has my product at least five to six times visible there it gives me a sense of oh, higher visibility there um i know there's a question about um uh, what if i don't have high number of skus and there are brands which have lower or smaller skus because of the business they're in in that scenario we recommend that you um do bundling and variance and there's an example of bundling or uh, variance that we put here or bundling um, I can take my 10 SKUs and make multiple combinations and explode it to at least 50. Um, one that helps in my visibility. The second thing it does for me is um, I can play with pricing. I can provide a better price for a combination of a certain two, another price for a combination of certain three. I can make a basket and create these multiple ASINs and uh, besides and add my basket size. So for people who have lesser number of SKUs, we typically recommend that you do variance and increase your portfolio to as much capacity as you can on the platform. Um, also, we do recommend new products every month. Um, just visually to see something new uh, makes me curious and want to click. So having new products come in, even if I say I'm introducing 20, this is, I'm using an example from the garment industry when I say 20 SKUs every month, I, um, I am producing, but I'm, um, I, will, I will stagger my uh, go live on the platform. I will space it out so that there is a sense of newness which is there on the platform. So that's on product assortment. Any more questions on product assortment we can take after the session. Um, yeah. Um, so here, now I wanna talk a little bit about pricing. Um, now, pricing is important. Pricing impacts your conversions and CTRs the maximum, more than anything else that we'll talk about. So your conversions are very, very highly dependent on how you price your product on the platform. You have to keep in mind that Amazon does discounting, but people come looking for discounts and deals besides the customer experience and the delivery timelines. It doesn't mean that you do not, you can't sell full price. You can sell full price because I know that's a concern with some clients that we've faced and people have spoken to us saying, I don't want to be a discounted brand. You don't have to be a discounted brand to be on Amazon, but you do need to keep in mind and factor certain SKUs that you will 
put on discount. Now, typically what we recommend, and that's, this is not a hard and fast rule. It depends on the industry and the category you're coming from. It's a 70-30 rule that we sometimes use, saying 70% of your products, full price, 30% of your products, put them on discount. Um, they will get featured in lightning deals, deal of the day, uh, various other promotions which you need for visibility. So you need to identify which th are those SKUs. It usually should be a combination of a couple of top movers and slow movers. Margins are play an important role in this. And when you say, okay, I'm going to discount, I'm going to only discount 5%, that doesn't work. Please buffer at least 20% discount in your pricing strategy and your final price that you put out there. You need entry level SKUs, but you do need to discount a certain number of SKUs out of your entire portfolio. Um, the other thing that we do track very um, aggressively is competition pricing. You know, my, there's one an MRP and then I have a selling price. And that fluctuates day on day depending on what you as a brand and what your competition decides to do at particular somebody decides to run a coupon somebody decides to do a flat discounting and that impacts your revenue so one you need to keep a track of that very aggressively and secondly um, if you're priced higher than your competition you need to be able you should be able to justify that pricing so it could be that you are doing organic or a certain material is different or your there is a uniqueness for your product that needs to come out very strongly or you have a very high brand recall. Uh, but that needs to come out strongly in your visuals and the content that you put in product title, bullet points, your A plus content, all of it. So those are two very important pieces for pricing. And then yes, of course, then your pricing, you will do your regular, your COGS and then your shipping and your commission, et cetera, to arrive at your pricing. But please do factor these aspects in it give some buffer and space for free play to be able to discount. Um, sometimes there've been a concern saying, okay, offline I'm selling at a certain price, online I can't discount. There are two separate ecosystems and you will have to manage both the ecosystems. Sometimes you, there'll be deals which go into offline which won't be available online. So it's, it's a hard, it's a hard uh, um, like a line to balance um, in my mind, but you will have, the two channels will have to be treated or should be treated differently. Um, uh, from pricing, I'm going to quickly move on to inventory. Um, now, this is a no brainer. Again, everybody knows this, uh, but don't have stock outs. Please do not, and I say this repeatedly, and you still have this problem. Do not have stock outs for your top sellers. It impacts your product ranking. It impacts your sales for that particular product because you have been running ads on it aggressively, especially on your top sellers. You're running ads, you're advertising, you're participating in various campaigns and suddenly you've stocked out. Now, if you stock out, all organization goes down the tube. So it doesn't mean that like, okay, today I stocked out, tomorrow I can put my stock back in and I'll be ready to run from the point that I dropped out of. No, you will go minus. So you need to, then your ads will start to re-optimize again because your ads have stopped. And you will have to read, your product ranking has dropped. So please factor in stock outs. Please do not have stock outs. I say this repeatedly over and over again, especially for your top sellers, especially for your high margin products, do not allow stock outs. Please plan your inventory well. Um, it's important to get a prime tag from a consumer perspective. People like to shop products which are available on Prime, which are available on FBA and Sellaflex. So please look for prime tags that, that those are important. The other thing about inventory um, is seasonality. And again, it's like retail, offline retail and online retail. And we probably all know this, but um, during season, and during events, please plan your inventory to 3x, to 4x. Usually, typically, your inventory is 1x, 2x of what you, um, you know, your sales number or your inventory that you have. You'll say, okay, I'm going to maintain an inventory of 2x. Look at your sell-throughs very closely. Uh, the reason we say this, it's not like you 
kind of dispatched to Amazon. Like today I'm saying, okay, I have a run rate of two months or oh, Diwali is coming up. I will send another batch. Yes, you can send another batch. But what happens is everybody is sending a lot of inventory when there is an event or there's a rush or there's a season or festivity. Now you are going to choke the Amazon system. So they're going to take longer than what they usually do to invert. And suddenly you've gone out of stock. So you're sitting, your inventory is in transit, it's not inverted, and you're sitting on a stock out on your of your top seller, that, that, that's, a, that's a destroyer. So it's all right to have excess inventory in Amazon warehouses when you are running a special, you know, an event is coming up or a Diwali is coming up or, or Christmas is there or any, any form of seasonality which, um, which is important for your industry and your category. So please ensure that you do not, do not stock out on your top sellers. Now, this is a big one. Um, sometimes we also still struggle on this. Um, MFN, FBA, Cloudtail, and I also know there have been questions around this. Um, now here, um, we definitely recommend FBA and Cloudtail or a combination of the two. The reason, the only time I would say MFN would be when your product very bulky and storing it in the warehouse for Amazon, maybe the storage costs are high, um, it's not viable, so you want to maintain inventory at your end. So you could also look at seller flex. But um, MFN typically is, you can start on it. If you have some products which are combination of bulky, light products, you can keep your bulky products on MFN. But ideally we recommend being on FP and Cloudtail. The reason for being on FB or Cloudtail is that a lot more, um, you will get account managers, you will get uh, promotions and deals which are not available for M MFN. Also from a customer point of view, on being on MFN, I have a longer delivery cycle. Whereas I'm spoiled, I've gotten used to getting products from Amazon within a day or two now as a consumer. So suddenly when I know I have to wait for a week or four days, for a delivery to happen, I'm, I'm not very keen on it. I also don't know the manufacturer. It does not have a prime tag. It doesn't say cloud tail. So the, the perception from a customer perspective, also it's better to be on FB and cloud tail. And yes, that means you need to hold inventory with them. You will have to be smart about the inventory and the level of inventory you want to hold with them. Now between FB and cloud tail, um, there is no right uh, format saying this works and this doesn't work. There's no right answer to this. It completely depends on the strength of your business and um, how, how are you building your business and where you want to go. Um, for example, I'll highlight what happens in FBA is you have a lot more control. You can, con you can see your sales on a daily basis. You can look at your inventory levels on a daily basis because you have access to the dashboard. You have, there's a lot more greater transparency in terms of information. You can control your pricing, your discounting, your content, but you have to manage it partially. It is you accessing the dashboard and taking stock and making, making sure everything is as per as the brand requires. Now that's being on FBA. So there is a lot more involvement from your end on it. Versus Cloudtail. Cloudtail is you've literally outsourced. They've come, they've bought X number of products and then they're going to sell it. You will provide them listing and visuals, et cetera, but build up the listing. They can change the listing and pricing whenever, depending on what their requirement is. And sometimes it changes. You reach back to them and say, you've changed our content, please fix it. They fix it, but the content and pricing changes. Sometimes you find your products on much higher discount than what you have actually agreed upon with Cloudtail. Now that happens is because Cloudtail follows something called automate, aut automatic pricing. So if you're on a bigger discount on any other marketplace or any other channel online, Cloudtail automatically picks that pricing and drops that pricing to that level. So those are some of the levers that Cloudtail has. And if you're okay with that, you can outsource it. Um, the advantages of Cloudtail is that there is higher replication. They have bigger warehouses and clusters. Um, and that, that's a big advantage to be able to put your inventory in multiple clusters. Um, they have higher credibility. They do have access to promotions and deals, which are not available to everybody else in the ecosystem. 
um, you will get your reports and information just a little bit delayed and not as easily or as quickly as FBA. So it's, it's a little bit of, you know, how much you want to control. The other thing is, um, for some of our clients, we say do a combination of both. And when we do, a, say, a combination of both, um, we look at it as two channels. There are two distribution channels. How do we want to use them? How do we want to treat them? Now, for example, if you have 500 SKUs, Cloudtail is not going to buy all 500 SKUs from you. They will buy your top sellers. They'll buy what is they think will sell. So maybe let's say 100 SKUs. Then the rest of the SKUs, you still want it to be listed on the platform. So you will in, and go for FB and list your products on the platform, run your launch pad, run your conversation. You will, you will still sell on FBA and you will sell on Cloudtail. So you will have to then juggle between the two. Over a period of time, you will see which one is working better and maybe you do decide to go with one of them over a longer period of time. Margins is another piece which helps decide between FBA and Cloudtail, the margin Cloudtail is taking. What is the margin on FBA? Can I put all my products on a Cloudtail on that margin? Do I segregate my product assortment for Cloudtail or FBA based on my margin? So that's the that's another format. That's another way to slice this and arrive at a decision. But there is no right answer on it. You will have these are some of the parameters you can use to decide whether you want to be on FBA or Cloudtail or a combination of both or or even an MFN for that matter. Um, so from here. Uh, from product pricing and inventory, I'm going to move to discoverability, which is the second um, scale-up piece that we were wanted to focus on. Now, I think we all know that 80% of Amazon traffic is search-driven. And when you're saying search-driven, I'm actually going and typing in the Amazon search bar for what I want. I have an intent to buy, I'm ready to buy. That's why I've come to Amazon. And then I will go and search for what I need on Amazon. And there are two kinds of um, listing or visibility or products which will pop up or conversations which will pop up. One will be organic listing, which will be based on your content and keywords and reviews. And then there will be one which is paid, which are your sponsored ads and your headline search ads, your display ads. So um, I'm, what we're going to do here is I'm going to just quickly run through uh, what aspects make a difference to Amazon SEO, which is your uh, content listing, which is organic results. Um, I will not deep dive on each one of them because that in the interest of time, but I will take one of them as an example on the next, next slide and talk about one of them. And uh, if there are any other specific questions around each of these, we can address later. But the backbone for Amazon discoverability is your keywords, whether it is ads and whether it is your organic content or your content, and you have to weave in the relevant keywords in your content. So the most important piece is to understand and know what are my most relevant keywords. There are various tools available for that. There is also like earlier when there were not tools like brand analytics and a few other tools were not available or specific Amazon tools were not available. We used to look at Google. We used to use the Google planner and pull out terms from there, keywords from there and just fine tune it knowing that Google is, you know, people are searching, making an opinion, here's an intent to buy. So there will be some difference between the two uh, and not all keywords would be relevant, but it gives you a broad idea to say, okay, these are my top, any keywords I want to play with or use, and then you weave that in your product titles, your bullet points, product specifications, A plus content. So you weave that content in. You weave those keywords in. You also use those keywords for your ads. Um, your product title is extremely important because it gets indexed. So your most relevant information and attributes need to come in the product title. And, uh, and then you can go down to your bullet points where you can talk about your product specifications in more detail. Please add as many visuals, like five slides, six slides of visuals. Take pictures which are closer of the product. The product needs to be visible. Like I relate it to offline retail. When I go shopping, I first get attracted by a window and I stop in front of the window and I look at the, I do window shopping and then I go in. So this is your window. You have to draw me in based on the visual because not everybody reads. Reading is a lot for 
Amazon SEO. And then my second step saying, okay, now I'm going to read a little more about it because I like what I see. So your visuals are very important. Please incorporate videos. Videos, movement, GIFs across digital has exploded. And that is true for even Amazon. Please incorporate videos in your PDP pages. Uh, your A plus content is very important for Amazon SEO. So if you say, oh, I've listed, um, I've done all my listings and now I want to spend on ads, we'll actually come back and say, where is your A plus content? Is your A plus content in place? Is it the relevant A plus content? Can you ramp up your A plus content? So sometimes I say spend money, spend time, spend effort to get your listings and your content in place and then start to spend on ads. Don't be in a rush to just spend on ads and not fix this. Actually, we say this for even like when somebody wants to their own do, do their own platform and web store, please spend money on your shoots, et cetera, all of that. So that applies here also. Um, um, your category noting is important. What category tree you fall in um, makes a difference on your visibility and searchability. Um, for example, for hygiene, do you want to be in personal care? Do you want to be in hygiene? Do you want to be in outdoors? So it, there are different categories and subcategory noting. That's critical. We also, when we, get, uh, when we work with somebody, we actually look at the category notings and wherever required, intervene and redo some of the category notings. Now, all of this, if we address this piece well, makes our organic listing there, you'll see a jump immediately once you fix the content you'll automatically see a jump in your organic listing now to give you an example now here uh, we are looking at a product title as an example um, one another thing please optimize for mobile everything that you do has to be for the mobile when you upload any content please check on your mobile first and not your laptop everybody like a lot of people rush to the laptop Everything is on mobile. We intuitively all know it's mobile, but we end up running around and like still going to the laptop to check. Please check your content on mobile and then say this is fine to go or not go. So if we look at this example here, it is Smartivity products. And why are you using this is because you see three ads and you see three, sorry, three products here. Now, if you look at the title one, there is no keyword or benefit visible to the customer in the first go, right? In the second one, we'll see age and able no benefit visible. Third type is best known as well as age, six years, boys and girls, STEM learning. So I'm saying age, gender, and a benefit to some degrees visible here. So that is my best optimized product title. Your most important keyword which defines your category and brand needs to come in the product title. Please make sure your product title is well done and the most relevant keywords or information is in the beginning and not towards the end. So your ordering is important. Place the most relevant keyword first and make sure that your title reads naturally. So don't like just for the sake of putting keywords, just fit it all in and it just for a consumer, it's disconnected. It's not reading well, it's not natural, please ensure that it, it reads naturally. So coherency is very important. So these are like a few uh, uh, pieces for product title and we're using product title as an example. We could actually run on each one of them and say what works, what doesn't work, what are the best practices for each of these, but we'll need another session on that completely. The other piece that we wanna talk about on discoverability is ads, your advertising. So. 70% of the Amazon shoppers never click past the first page of your results. So in nutshell, what we are trying to say is you have to spend on ads. If you want your product visible, if you want to grow, you have to spend on ads. There is no way around it. Um, and one of the matrix that when we talk to people in the first conversation is your, you know, um, my advertising cost of sales. I hope most people here are familiar with advertising cost of sales. And we look at, um, a lot of people focus on direct advertising cost of sales. And direct means like in my Amazon dashboard, I'm saying I've spent 100 rupees. My revenue from spending that 100 rupees directly is 400 rupees. I'm at a cost of 25%, I'm okay. Now we look at this a little differently and I'm fairly sure some more people in um, and this ecosystem would agree on it, you have to look at your overall advertising cost of sales. 
like already in, in when you're doing web store, um, when you're focusing on your web store or app or mobile, you've started to look at ROS, which is your overall, oh, I've spent this much money so far and these are my sales. Because your Google multi-channel funding now shows that you're getting people from so many places and remarketing and all of it. So just to factor it to one place is becoming hard. So ROS has become a matrix. Similarly, here we are saying, look at overall advertising cost of sales. Um, which means that I've spent 100 rupees. My revenue is 1,000 rupees overall. I was earlier at 600 rupees overall. So I'm at 10% of my revenue. My ad spend is 10% of my revenue. And then you as a business would know what is my threshold. Is my overall, can I go up to 20%, 25%? What is my threshold that I want to maintain? Hence my overall advertising cost of sales become important because I'm going to indirectly also when I advertise, it's going to uh, feed into my indirect revenue also and not just my direct revenue. And, um, and, in, and why I emphasize on that is like during certain peak seasons like December, November, um, October, um, sometimes you have to run direct A costs to the level of 50%, 60%, sometimes 70% and lower. Don't get freaked out by that if your overall advertising cost of sale is where you want, 10%, 15%, 20%, hopefully not more than 20%. But if it's within that matrix, if your direct overall cost of sales is running, let it run for that duration and then optimize it because it's feeding into your top line. So I, I would re-emphasize on that. Please keep overall advertising cost of sales as a most important matrix when you're talking about ads. Uh, then there are, I will move quickly to type of ads. Um, there's sponsored ads followed by sponsored brand ads. And then you have display ads. We do have on the next slide have um, screenshot to just show placement for it for some people who, do, who are not familiar with the different form and types of ads. Uh, but we would recommend um, sponsored ads as the first ad format to begin with and then go to headline search ads. Headline search ads and sponsored, they're re renamed as sponsored brand ads are important for both brand and sales, whereas sponsored ads are slightly more direct sales. So those are two um, ad types that we would um, recommend focusing on. And within when you're making your, how you make your ad structure is important. Um, so when you're creating your ad structure, please take, uh, um, when you're creating an ad group, take products from the same category in one ad group because you will have the relevant keywords to that. You will know which keyword is working and not working for which, uh, for that particular category. If I put mix two categories in a particular ad group, what happens is I don't know the keyword has worked for which of the two categories. So please segregate, have a very, very structured um, ad group and, and the number of products within that ad group. Also, what happens is that you will first start with automatic ad campaigns. You learn from them and you take those keywords and feed in your manual ad campaigns. So you run them simultaneously and you over a period of time, switch off your automatic campaigns and run manuals because you can optimize that well. Now, all of this, if you're a category C um, um, business, then there are multiple tools which are available now, which will help you uh, there, um, in, in managing just your ads well, which they literally break it down to saying one product, one keyword, that's one ad group. One, so you will literally run like 400, 500 ad campaigns and they get optimized and the algos which run on the back end to optimize that. You can monitor it, intervene wherever there is, there is a requirement for it. Otherwise, so that, that, but that's at, a, that's at a level where you're spending fair amount of uh, money on your ad spend for your revenue. Uh, to add to your top line. Uh, but otherwise, I think to begin with, it can be done manually. It can be managed. Amazon provides support on ads um, and you run from there. You manage, you monitor them on a daily basis and you monitor your bids on a daily basis. You look at your uh, keywords on a daily basis. If something's gone high, low, you revise your keyword list almost once a month to say, okay, are there any new keywords I want to add in these ad groups? So you continue to experiment and fine tune on this. So just a quick uh, look, this is a headline search ad. These are sponsored ads, which you'll see in your listing. And these are display ads, which come under your 
add to cart. These are cross selling. I can actually say, okay, if I have a product which is relevant for outdoor, then I can actually go and look at, um, what do I say, um, at tents or camping gear, and I can push my ad on, on those PDP pages. So you can cross sell. Okay, so um, I now wanna talk a little bit about reviews and ratings. Um, this is again, um, um, it's, it's, uh, we all want reviews. We all want a lot of reviews. We wanna jump from 10 reviews a day to 100 reviews like tomorrow, and then exponentially grow. It's a tough one. Um, it's a little bit of a chicken and egg. You, you have to get people to buy, and then you have to get them to do reviews. And once they do reviews is how your ranking goes higher. So it's like a vicious cycle. And I think a lot of us struggle on this one. Um, uh, and, and there is no easy way around it again. Um, you do need to maintain, like as a matrix, maintain a rating of four plus. Like sometimes if you're in a rating which is less than four, you will not be eligible for certain promotions. So you need to maintain a rating for four plus. Consumers use filters on ratings to shop. So in my mobile or my laptop on the left, I will actually, a lot of times I just say, you know, I wanna see products only like whichever higher rating. Um, never ignore negative reviews. Please address them. They're very important for the health of your account and your visibility and customer feedback. Um, when you actually Amazon in the system sends out an email, you can also through Amazon send out emails to customers because you don't own the customer in case of FBO or Cloudtail. So you can't actually write to them or send out separate emails to them. So you have to use the Amazon system for that. So you need to get both product reviews and seller feedback. You need both. And sometimes people miss out on that. So when you're, the good thing is you can structure your email well. So when you're structuring your email, you need to very, very specifically ask for product reviews and also seller feedback. What you see here as an example is of a customer review. So you, you, need, you need both. And um, yeah, so that's, that's on reviews and rating, but there's another piece within, this is from a consumer perspective. Um, also, there's one piece I missed out on that saying, please get authentic reviews. I know we all try to get reviews from everywhere. There were agencies who were running um, um, reviews which we could get done and it still can get done in multiple ways. I'm sure of that, uh, that format exists, uh, but try and get as many authentic reviews as you can. You could use your um, influencer marketing system, your Facebook system, uh, multiple other ways to get people to come onto your pages, use your product, give feedback and build it from there. Google, uh, sorry, um, Amazon runs literally 600 parameters on which they check your reviews. So if there is even a possibility that like a bunch of reviews have happened around the same time or one location or on a certain product where there were no reviews earlier and suddenly I'm getting a lot of reviews, they'll check. And the minute they find anything which is off, you will get blacklisted. So please be very careful on where you're getting free your reviews from and who's giving the review and how you're managing your reviews. It's important, but you will have to, um, um, yeah, you, you need to be careful on this. Um, the one brand that we've, uh, and me and DT have discussed this very often saying, who do a very good job on this is Wow Shampoos. We got a call, repeat call, like they have a full, full um, customer a process built around it to call up and check if you've got the product or an email to check the product. And then they have rechecked after a couple of months and never have been very pushy on, or even the emails were never very pushy on saying, no, we'll go give us a review. Just talked about how our experience has been at the end of it. You get so vested in that you end up giving a review to them. But that's just one example. Your account performance and seller rating is important. And this is for Amazon, they track you. So they track you uh, to see if you're dispatching on time, are you responding to custom messages on time? How, what is the level of cancellations you're doing? And all of this is important to have your account health because based on account health, they'll allocate managers, they will give you additional, like it all goes into, all of it feeds into your visibility and your performance. And you need to track this very tightly. Please do not 
be laxed on responding to customer messages and do not do late dispatches and cancellations if you can. Uh, you can get your product or account delisted if you ignore this. And right now it all looks, yeah, zero here because we, we also couldn't find a lot of screenshots with Amazon being shut. Okay, so this is one um, 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 aspect I would like to spend some time on, which is your relationship with your Amazon team. Yeah, and most of you would be in touch with your category manager and say, oh, well, we're already talking to them. Great, you're talking to them, but what are you talking to them about? How often are you talking to them? How vested are they in your brand? All of that completely, how many teams are you talking to? All of that is very important to, especially when you're scaling up, to get additional promos, events, deals, making them, want to build your brand along with you. So meet your Amazon team once a month for sure. Go to Bangalore if they're traveling. I mean, and right now it's all going to be on Zoom, sorry. But earlier, you would meet them every month. You touch base with them at least two, three times a week. If you're a brand which is at a scale up and a fairly decent scale up stage, you would be talking to at least 15 people in the Amazon ecosystem. Category managers, marketing team, Cloudtail, Launchpad, other program teams support on Amazon ads team. Like there is like, we've gone and spent days in their office because we are going from one team to the other and only for one brand. Now, why is this important? They, you should also do revenue planning with them. Show them that you're very hungry. You will do whatever it needs. They, you, it's literally like saying, tell us what you want. We want to grow. We want to hit these numbers and what do you need? And we'll do it. So they get, they work with you in tandem once they know you're hungry and willing to go out of your way to work with them because end of the day, their matrix is also performance, right? So it's a win-win in our mind. Um, also a lot of additional promotions, events, and deals open up when you have build-in relationships or you have account managers with Amazon. Yes, you have lightning deals in your backend, in your seller panel, you can do, you can, you can run a lightning deal. Um, but um, it, it's, it's restricted, the frequency is restricted. So you get frequent, um, Lightning deals, you'll get deal of the day, prime day, best deal access, art event visibility and deals, Amazon specials. So there's a fair number of options uh, and promotions which open up and then, then it's, uh, it's on the brand and the team to work out as to what is relevant and what you should go for. So please build your relationship with Amazon, spend time with them, get vested with them, and they get vested with you to build your brand. This is the last piece and then we'll open up. I think I've taken a more time than I thought I would take far more than 20 minutes. Um, uh, this is cross border selling. And uh, this is for you going to new markets. And so you have some established markets like the US, UK, Europe, you have new markets like UAE, Singapore, Japan, Australia. Um, all of them are exciting markets. You should definitely look at new markets. There's much more, there's higher margin available there, but you need to understand the market well. Please do your homework before you list on these platforms that all your certifications that you need are in place. Uh, do you need any additional certification? Look at the keywords and the conversations they're having. They may be different from what you run on Amazon India. So you will need to fine tune your content and conversation keywords based on the markets there. Um, your pricing strategy would be different based on what the market pricing is there, what is the competition there. So it's not necessary that you put the same pricing there. You will have to stock inventory with each of these markets. So you may not want to sell all your products. You will send what you think will work and then slowly increase and decrease based on what, what is working or not. So differential products and pricing. Um, some of the new markets are exciting. Like UA is very exciting right now. Australia is exciting because there's less a competition and there's better visibility at a lower cost in UAE, for example. So um, some of these new markets are exciting. And um, again, a decision to say which market to go to and which market not to go to um, is something depending on the business, the product gap, opportunity, X amount of research is one need to deep dive in and then arrive at, okay, which are the relevant market for us to begin and then to go from there. So that's, um, from my end and thank you very much and i hope this was useful and happy that to was really helpful. um we and, had actually yeah. floated, uh you know a form on the group where people could ask in a bunch of questions that uh, they want to talk about uh we have the questions put together if it's uh, fine with you i can we you know we can take a little more time and i'll just uh ask a couple of those yes. so 
you know, one around uh, opportunity identification, and you know, you you spoke about uh, the global sales uh, piece right now. So just sort of linking from that, what really sh would you recommend should be the strategy for taking uh, product assortment for India and for globally? Like, how how does one think through that? Hmm. So um, I think um, it's it's a lot of research on just the Amazon ecosystem in the US. Like we literally sit down manually, or you can use Jungle Scout or some of the other tools which are available. But um, it's literally sitting down and saying, okay, where this is my product category, and where are the gaps? Are the same products available in the same price range in the Amazon ecosystem? Is is am I audible, or should I just switch off my video? Is yeah, that I think it's fine. Okay. I'll let you know if you need to. Okay. Okay. So um, it's it's actually looking at who my competition is. For example, if I just take the U.S. market as an example, who my competition is, uh, uh, research on our end saying, okay, these are the products which are available. These are the pricing it's available. Can we um, uh, keeping all the shipping and the fact that we have to hold inventory there? Can we run on the same pricing or like a similar pricing as the competition or a little up and down? Do we have a niche? that we can price ourselves premium to the competition. And, um, and hence that defines the product strategy. Also the weight, for example, like I have X amount of storage space on Amazon um, US because I'm, I'm paying for storage across. So I will send certain products. Like sometimes you wanna sell um, lighter products and not very heavy products because volume wise, their pricing can go exponentially high. That means you will end up pricing those products extremely high on the platform, which a consumer may not want to buy at that price because other products in the similar range are not at that price. So um, it's, a, it's a combination of product gap, um, what, what out of your range is not available, or can you create products which are not available? So that plus your shipping costs and what is the market pricing there? As, does, that, does that help? Yeah, yeah. that's super helpful. Um, I think another question, which is, uh, it's, I love how it's put. Um, how can we just, you know, move from page three, five, seven on Amazon to page one? Like that's the holy grail. So what do we, how do we get there? Yeah, all, all the pieces that we've just talked about in the last, like whatever, like I've taken 30, 35 odd minutes or more, maybe. I don't know, all of them, all of them. It's, there's, no, there's no hack around it. But so I think your ads, and your content needs to be really in place if you want to. If you, want to pick, uh, if you want to pick two things, like as you know, the most important. Uh, what would that? Fix be? your content. Fix your content. Fix your keywords. Find the relevant keywords. Fix your content. Run ads. And and your so the reason why I don't say reviews and everybody says reviews because reviews are really hard. Like yeah. Because you you know if you try and go around it, you can get caught. And so reviews are harder and it's a little bit of a chicken and egg. And that's why I say, fix these two pieces first. What's yeah. more in your control? And then you push reviews. Understood. Um, you know, since you did speak about marketing uh, as well, like, as you know, we should definitely always put ads to scale it up. Um, how, I, Abhishek, I lost you. Can you, yeah. can you that? Um, sorry, so what I was saying was, yeah. let me just kill my video. Is it better now? Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Super. Um, so, you know, specifically within Amazon, uh, the ecosystem or like a Flipkart ecosystem. So any e-commerce platform as an ecosystem, how much of the sales coming through that pipe should one plug back into advertising on that platform? Well, we typically say, let's say you're, um, you know, you should do, you should at least like 10, 15% of your total revenue, you should put back in marketing and it could go higher. It could go 20%, could be 20, not more than 20, 20. 25% is a max, like then I start to get worried, honestly. Uh, but still about 20% and 20% also is when I say when you're in a, you're, you're in aggressive mode. I want to go out there. I want to be visible. I want to capture. And then I want to retract back to 10%. So you could also, it's not like you'd need to be constantly at a 20% aggressive, 25% aggressive mode. You can scale back and then come and do a big burst and scale back. But between 10 to 10, 15% is a, is a, yeah, to your overall, overall revenue. I'm not talking directly cost. There's a big difference between the two. Right, understood. Um, I think one more thing around here, you know, obviously a bunch of people, uh, like Launchpad uh, keeps reaching out to a bunch of us uh, brands in the space, right? Uh, there is an additional cost to this. Do you think it makes sense for brands to get on board Launchpad for that additional cost? Or is it, you know, only specific categories where it makes sense? 
Um, it would be a little bit about the category you're in, but uh, yes, Launchpad helps because they give you certain promotions like category banners, certain visibility, which is not available otherwise. Uh, and they would throw that as a part of the bucket. So we would recommend Launchpad to begin with, to start out and over a period of time and established, you've done various distribution, you're working directly with the marketing team on a bunch of other things, then you could roll off. But to begin with, yes, because they give you that first push out. Understood. Okay. Um... You know, obviously, like Amazon doesn't really isn't you know quite transparent in terms of the customer behaviors and customer needs and all of that. And uh, I, I dropped off for a bit in the middle, so I'm not sure if you've already spoken about this. But um, what ways would you recommend uh, you know where brands can actually try and understand that behavior better? Uh, like as an example, something that just you know I've seen a brand do was all that like they would you know they would ship a lot of their Amazon orders themselves. Um, so that what they could basically do is, in, you know, they're in, inserting some form of a marketing communication, which almost incentivizes the consumer to actually mail them back or, you know, to answer a survey or to do something so that they get, they actually get a sense of who the consumer is and what, um, obviously, you know, with scale, you can't really do that because, you know, you'll, you'll move to fulfilled by Amazon and things like that. But how do you, you know, how, how do you build it into systems to get some of this customer insight and information, in whatever manner you can? Yeah. So um, I cannot um, definitely, I can't get all my customer information directly because uh, unless you're on MFN, but uh, you know, they've built in some tools to give you a broad sense of who your customer is, like information around age group, demographics, et cetera, available, um, your consumer behavior. You know, if you look at brand analytics and they also have another tool called Pi, if you work with these tools, you can actually get a sense on um, the behavior on the platform for consumers, what age groups, what cities, what are they searching for? Uh, what are they buying? You will get, they're, they're, they're building in analytics to give you um, some reports about consumer behavior, but they will not, of course, you won't have access to saying, okay, this is my customer, you know, like, and I can talk to this customer. So no, that, that's not there, but there are tools now in the dashboards. Understood. What I'm going to do is, you know, I think post this uh, entire webinar, I'm going to uh, reach out to you and just ask for all the tools you mentioned through the conversation. And we'll probably just put that as part of your deck on one of the slides or something. So, you know, people actually have it captured. Yeah. Uh, one other question is, uh, you know, just from a unit economics perspective, um, with Amazon, there's obviously a whole bunch of different, different charges uh, that are built in. So is that, you know, I think some brands are struggling with being able to really figure out what is the unit economics cost, right? How, how do I split that cost across uh, my sales? So is there something specific that you know of or you'd recommend in terms of calculating how my costs are at a per unit level? Uh, and, you know, just, just to also flag, um, this becomes relevant when one has a portfolio of products across different price points. But, uh, you know, you're really, you're really trying to figure out, uh, should I sell the stuff that's above a thousand rupees only on Amazon or should I sell the stuff that's below a thousand bucks, for example? Um, yeah, you'll have to do that calculation. You're like, we literally have sheets where we um, say, what is our retention sheet? Like we put in all our costs. This is our cost. This is cost of shipping. This is cost of packaging. This is cost of all of it, all of it. And then, and this is a Amazon commission. This is my discounting. This is my additional, if I've done a marketing spend on it, like you put in all your costs and you can actually at a unit level, know if I make margin, what is my margin coming to? And then say, is this margin enough or not? Like as a business, I know my benchmark of a margin, right? I need to make this much margin of any product I sell so that I can then take care of my overheads because then comes my salaries and my other marketing costs of brand building and all of that, right? So um, you will know what your net gross margin that you need or a net margin that you need as a business. Um, and you may want to tweak that a little bit um, uh, from like when you run your own store or physical retail and saying, okay, this is what I'm willing to do extra on Amazon or let my margin drop to this level on Amazon because I'm getting a lot of footfall. Right. And maybe volumes will fact will take care of it, but ballpark, you will have to do that calculation and certain products which don't make sense. Don't have yeah. them on Amazon. Do not, do not have them on Amazon on, on a cloud, like cloud tip or, a, or FBR, keep them on MFN or keep them on other platforms may, or just keep them on your web store and you can run an exclusive on your web store for some of those products. But if they're not making 
um, a sense beyond a point, then don't have it. Unless you're ready to say, okay, these are my opportunity costs. I'm going to let this product run at, let's say, literally zero margin, negative margin for six months. And once yeah. I've reached a certain scale, then I will either up my price a little or I'll take it off like completely then. So, so then that becomes a lot more just the intent behind having the product. I mean, it's just having it for building yeah. awareness. Then it's yeah. all about marketing tool. Yeah, and and end of the day, I will look at my if I have hundred SKUs, I look at my overall net unit economics. I will not look at it at an individual level. I will just say yes. I will do the analysis to say okay, um, these are my ten products which give me the highest margin. Are they my top sellers or slow movers? And if my highest margin products are not my top sellers, I have a concern. How do I make them top sellers? Then I want to focus and work towards making those top sellers because I get my maximum margin from there. I will just let my slow movers be there or lower margin products be there, but not push them beyond the point. And sometimes you have product which is your, um, which is your top seller and is in negative margin. And then you say, I'm going to let this run. Either I increase my price or I'm going to put this as cost for marketing or sales or saying, I'm getting my brand out there and people are getting to experience my product because of this product. So you're actually carrying a loss leader with you. And you, but you have to do that very consciously and still maintain your final health. So you have to spend time on financials on this. Yeah. Understood. Um, cool. I think we do have uh, fair, some questions, but I think most of them have been covered uh, during you know, the last hour ballpark. I think this has been super helpful for pretty much everyone. Unfortunately, I think there were about 200 people started to join, but uh, we our Zoom, we forgot to upgrade our uh, already pro account on Zoom to increase oh. the audience. Um, so we might look at doing this again or, uh, you know, a more detailed uh, sort of the next, uh, you know, the next yeah. in-depth class on this, uh, which follows from this. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sarika, for the time. Thank uh, you so much. I'm happy to be here. And if there are any specific joining. areas you want me to address in more detail for the audience, if there are questions, and I'm happy to do another session. Um, there was just one question I do want to address. Somebody had asked me, uh, yeah. I mentioned niche fashion. Should you, what do you do for niche fashion brands? And I would say, I'm not sure if Amazon is the right platform. So just Hi. leave that there. Yeah. Hello. Hi, Sarika. This is Anuj. I am hi. from Nicobar. Ah, hi, Anuj. Uh, yeah, so I had written that question. So I just wanted to ask, you know, for niche fashion brands like ours, like we're not Masi, right? So how no. do we operate with that? Um, I, I won't recommend Amazon as a, as a platform platform for you. Uh, what I would do is if you still want to be present on the platform, you could look at your uh, few seasons, your last few seasons, and use that inventory to liquidate. Uh, mm -hmm. on platforms but um i yeah no <laughs> so mainly i think just get at look at liquidation and get done with it right yes you can do liquidation unless they're willing to run something exclusive or amazon <laughs> fashion is going doing something very uh, in, uh, unique and interesting and if they're putting a certain section which is catering to nicobar and the likes of nicobar with their sure. some more brands like that if they're doing something special yes then go ahead Mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise, um, I, I'm not. I'm not going to recommend it, honestly. Yeah, because the question is coming for the fact that you know they do have high-end ten purchases, right? So yes. it's not that the audience is not there. Just I think the discoverability factor is the problem. I feel. Yeah, you can put your last like uh, uh, two seasons back, okay. or whatever you have before that. Please put it up. Thank yeah, you. So you much. can do that. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm going to sign off. Thanks. Um, yeah. Thank you yeah. so much, Sarika. Thank you for the time. And yeah. thanks everyone for joining. Uh, you know, just feel free to post any feedback to me directly or to Abhishek, the other Can Abhishek. I just ask a last question, please? Yeah, sure, sure. Sure, go for it. Sarika. Hi. Uh, hi, this is Rakesh. Hello. I want to check with you. Uh, there are multiple warehouses that FBA runs, right? So uh, how important do you see products to be shipped to all the places? I mean, do you see an important uh, influence to the business if we were to ship it to multiple FBA warehouses or is one city uh, FBA fulfillment center is, is good enough? What, what's your take on that? A, a good recommend because it um, ensures that, you know, product is available at different locations so delivery will be faster. So that, that gets benefited to you as a brand and as an organization and impacts your sales. So do, do send, do ship out to various clusters. Yes. 
Oh, cool. Thanks. Yeah, you could, you could segregate saying, okay, these are my important clusters because I think broadly my customers come from these clusters. So if you're worried about inventory getting stuff, you can say, okay, I'm going to make sure I'm definitely there in my top four clusters and not there on like all the clusters. So you can do that. So the reason I ask is because it also, you know, kind of uh, invites a little bit of paperwork, which means GST, multiple states and stuff like that. So I just thought if there is a, uh, you know, benefit uh, overweighing the, the, the effort. I, I would recommend it. And Deepti, if you want to say something here, please jump in and say if she's listening in. Then, yeah. Uh, yes. Hi, uh, Rakesh. Just to add to that, uh, what you could also do is uh, the, you can get glance view reports from your account managers. Uh, you could ask for that. Uh, uh, sorry, what report did you say? Glance view reports. Glance view, okay. It'll tell you uh, which clusters, from which clusters you're getting maximum glance views. So you can then also decide basis that if you should open those clusters or not. Because it's possible that you're getting customers from Delhi and not enough customers from Bangalore because you do not have stock there. So yeah, that's one piece that you could look at. Perfect. I think that answers. I'll do a little bit of homework on this. Sure. Hey, I have a quick question as well. This is Shalab from Akiva. Hi, Zarika. Hi, uh, how are you? Any way, unless one is doing MFN, to get a sense of customer cohorts, repeat rates, etc., from Amazon? Uh, Deepthi, do you want to take that? It's gone on. Yeah, there she is. Sorry, Shalab, would you be able to repeat that once? I was uh, I was asking if we are doing FBA or Cloudtail, is there any way at all for us to understand what our customer cohorts are? No, no, not. I mean, even for the larger brands, etc. Uh, does Amazon give that information on a? Pi gives you some information. There's a tool called Pi. It gives you some information, but it's in bits and parts. You won't be able to get a complete sense on your customer cohorts. Um, yeah, but that's about it. You'll be able to get it, get the information in bits and pieces. Got it. Got it. Um, you, you could try your um, uh, Amazon team and how tightly you're hip jointed with them and if they can give you some in deep dive. But that also will be very limited. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Okay, thank you so much. That's all for me. All right, thanks. So, I mean, we can, I guess we can take in any other questions if people have some. Um, hi, Sarika. Uh, Ankita here. Hi. Uh, hi. Uh, I think it's sort of fairly similar to what uh, 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 Nicobar asked. Uh, we are a made to order brand and uh, we generally, we've mentioned this on Amazon as well, that we need about two to three days to create a product and dispatch. We do not do FBA categorically because we are a made to order brand. Um, so do you think that as, as a brand, uh, is there any possibility or any avenue uh, that we will be able to uh, sell more on Amazon or, I mean, it's mostly, it's better if you keep your inventory ready, uh, keep it on FBA, keep it in warehouses and not uh, sort of focus on uh, me to order for selling on Amazon particularly. Um, I see there are two or three things that come to my mind on that. Like if you're a um, extremely well-known brand, then yes, people will search for you with on Amazon and maybe they're okay with the three to four day or two to three day uh, delivery. Uh, you will, I'm sure, still be selling some. It's just that you, the the number of units you would sell versus if you had your inventory right there and delivery in the next one or two days, would, there would be a difference. And I don't know if you're the business, you're okay with that or not. Um, um, the third thing, and we faced this with a, with a client a few years back, and if you would remember that, what we ended up doing is um, we knew some of the products which were um, like cash cows, like which were basics, which we knew were being ordered. And so we actually started to hold inventory on just those products on FBA and let the rest be on a made to order. So that at least helped us do the jump and improve some, some bit of the revenue. Okay. Yeah. Right. And also, do you think uh, if, uh, if, if we opt right now, we are uh, shipping via Amazon. So if we ship via as a self ship, uh, do you think that affects or harms uh, the brand image in any way in, in, in the sense does Amazon sort of uh, have uh, more strict rules? Because we've never moved into the uh, self-ship option uh, for shipping our products. So uh, do you think if we do move uh, to self-ship, it will harm the brand uh, uh, customer facing wise or 
uh, in, uh, you know, merchant facing lines? Um, I don't particularly think so. Diti, would you want to address this? Because I think you will have more input um, on I don't think it'll harm the brand. It's just that most customers prefer uh, fulfill the tag that you get, the fulfill by Amazon tag uh, or the prime tag. Uh, you can also get that by being on seller flex, but then again, for that, you would ha need to have some basic, uh, you know, requirements uh, that Amazon has, and you'd need to be at a certain scale to get the facility for flex. Um, they're also coming up with more programs uh, where you can have the inventory at your warehouse and you get the prime tag. Uh, but otherwise, I don't see any other harm than customer being like, it's slightly detrimental to the customer because most customers prefer buying something which is prime. Got it. Yeah, I understand. Uh, I have a question. Hi. Hi, I had a question. Um, just you mentioned uh, you mentioned this tool, Jungle Scout. Are there any other tools that you uh, you suggest for the in, for Amazon in or Amazon US tools that you could? I mean from all the way from inventory to accounting to multiple stages. I know that a lot of like returns, reimbursements, all of that stuff is very hard to track for us. So are there any like tools that just do it for you like, like simply and like in a nice way, which is well, makes different, different tools which cater to different pieces. What we can do is what we, uh, Abhishek mentioned, like we can put a list of tools together and say what this tool caters to. Like there's a tool just for ads. If you reached a certain scale, we talked, I mentioned that earlier also, that is there. There's a tool to just check what is the pricing that is running across, right? So you don't have to manually do competition pricing, but you can actually just use the tool to map that out. We can send out the list of uh, tools and uh, uh, Abhishek. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just put it on the deck. I mean, uh, I think for, for the whole group, that'll be beneficial even for the participants who aren't um, online right now. We can send that out to everyone. All right, yeah. thank you. I have... Sachin, you had a question, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, can, you, can you hear me? Yes, hi, Sachin. Hi, Sarika. Um, there is a question regarding Sell ship prime versus normal Amazon FBA prime. Could you highlight on this? Um, it might, so typically on MFN, your, your timing is more than the time which Amazon takes to deliver. They're just logistically, they're the largest logistics company, more than just saying they're a bad platform for e-commerce. So um, in sell ship, the time is just, is longer. And unless- Sell ship prime. Oh, um, I don't know. Do you think, do you, have anything on this? Uh, so, Sachin, what exactly would you like to understand there? On self ship Prime, Amazon is offering it to certain sellers who can manage the guaranteed delivery timelines that they have, and they're pretty strict about it. But if there is a specific piece that you'd like to understand there on self ship Prime, then I can explain that. Mostly on visibility and conversions. Visibility uh, is pretty much the same. Your product will show as prime. It's just that what will happen is if let's say you're in Bangalore, um, the timelines would still be the same, uh, would still be longer for somebody in Delhi, right? Because your product is there in Bangalore. You, your product will show as prime, but the timelines would be longer. So that's how it's different. self ship prime and FBA prime. So I'm sorry oh, to... And then uh, don't you think uh, uh, self ship prime if because prime as a tag itself helps any brand or any product to uh, automatically because the first thing I do is when I go to Amazon, I click on the filter of prime and whatever yes. is on prime, I buy that because it sort of helps the addition, additional, um, you know, uh, credibility of the product and the seller. So uh, if I, if I, is it, isn't it a very good option for brands like us who are made to order to consider each and every of their warehouse to be a prime location and convert ourselves into a prime? It is a good option. Uh, it's just that like usually brands have warehouses in one location. You would not have a warehouse in multiple locations unless you're at a large scale and you have uh, you know, as many warehouses as Amazon would have. So that is why FBA Prime is better. Uh, but what happens is self ship Prime is more convenient for sellers. Uh, so it would be more convenient for you. Uh, you would not have to send it to Amazon warehouses. Um, and that would be sorted for you. But yeah. Um, also, 
also like because you're made to order, right? If you're a made to order, and earlier we didn't have this self ship prime when we did the earlier like a few years back. So um, maybe that that's a method. That's a way forward. Actually, that that would be interesting for her to try uh, self ship uh, prime because uh, because of the, uh, the the very fact that it's a made to order and she doesn't have ready inventory. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. she gets a prime tag. So that's something for you to explore for sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, um, Abhishek? Yep, I think um, yeah. we can call it a wrap. Okay. Thank you so much, Sarika. Thanks, everyone. And have a lovely yeah. evening. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sarika. Thanks, Thanks Sarika. Thank you so much. This. Thank you. 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 Thank you.